Yes, Bloom is safe during pregnancy. A ton of people were concerned about it, but my best advice is to talk to your doctor before you're taking it. And I know that I said I wasn't really going to talk about this a lot, but the other day when I was feeling very cutesy and very demure, I didn't know what I know now. I'm not making this up. The caption is literally replying to at Anna when you're depressed, but you still need to film this at Bloom Nutrition ad because it's 30% off today and tomorrow for Amazon Prime Day. Hey guys, it's Briar of Briar Chats and this is a safe space for yappers. Now, in the past, I'm sure we have all seen the Bloom Nutrition sponsorships. Insert examples here. Did you guys know that even if a liquor is made with wheat, rye, or barley, it is also gluten-free? When you were 16, you wanted a smaller waist, a bigger bum, or a smaller nose. I have at least three drinks going at all times every day. Orange juice, great, tastes good, has benefits, but I can make it taste better and have more benefits if I added greens. I went home and did some work and then got ready for dinner. I made my bloom greens before dinner because I was feeling a little bloated. Am I missing something here? What, what is the problem with bloom? Why is everybody hating on them so much? They didn't even need me to talk about it. They were just like, hey, if you just work it into your regular content and just tell a story that you would normally tell, just having bloom in your video, we're gonna pay you to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, exactly. And it felt like for a time, things got quiet again. It felt like for a time we had peace on the internet or at least we weren't being bothered by Bloom sponsorship. However, I unfortunately have to report to you, the people, the besties, that unfortunately the Bloom Nutrition sponsorships are back and they are worse than ever. And we simply have to yap about it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, stick around and let's get into it. Obviously, before we get into it, loud and clear for the besties at the back, this is just my opinion. Now, the TLDR on Bloom Nutrition is that it is a wellness company. It was started by Mari, who is an influencer that really rose to fame due to her health and wellness transformation and journey. I believe she lost 90 pounds. And after that, she started this company with her now husband, Greg, and it is a very much a health and wellness company. And interestingly, keep it in your minds because this is important. It will be important later. Yes, it will. It is a female forward company with a female founder and female led team. Our mission is to make approachable, delicious and effective supplements so every woman can bloom into their best self from the website itself. And the products that I feel like they use the most for their hashtag spawns, hashtag ads, hashtag gifted is their greens powder. And as we saw in the examples, they were just integrating sorry i gotta stop doing the i feel like joey from friends just throwing out the air bunnies for no reason they were integrating the product into their usual content so if they're a story time if they're doing a get ready with me if they're annoying their boyfriend whichever whatever whomst ever the greens powder is just she's just sitting there like this just you know suggesting letting you know, letting you see, putting the idea in your head that maybe you too would thrive and be like an influencer if you had a greens powder. And that was bad enough. That caused enough of a commotion, enough of a problem, and enough of an issue with Bloom. So how on earth has it gotten worse? I hear you say. Well, I'm so glad that you have asked because the most recent examples that we are going to get into, I feel like it only takes it to the next level. Like they haven't listened to our feedback. They haven't digested it and taken it away and not done that. They have instead been like, turn it up because the most recent Bloom spawns that I have seen have not only been integrated into the usual content, but it is content that is what is making that person most viral and usually to do with their personal health or their mental health. It is pushing these influences and it is being used in posts by these influencers in content where it's about their mental health, where it's about their physical health, where it's about their physical safety and using the knowledge that people are watching and tuning in and that these are very viral topics for these creators and putting in sponsorships there. 
even if it's at the expense of their health. So without further ado, without any more yap yap yappers, let's simply get into my examples and react to them, shall we? Now the first one definitely pains me because I really do like this influencer and that is Samantha Jo. You may know her from TikTok or YouTube. She is very popular on both platforms. She has over a million YouTube followers and she has 3.7 million TikTok followers. So she is a very big creator and recently she also announced that she is pregnant. However, that's not what she's posting about in the sponsorship. Nay, nay, I say because she lives in Florida. And as you may have heard on the news and everywhere, Florida has been going through some pretty terrifying hurricanes recently. Two hurricanes, in fact, Helene and Milton. And these hurricanes have led these people's audiences, these influencers that are based in Florida's audience, to be checking in with them more because they want to make sure that they're safe, they want to make sure that they're okay. Everyone is checking in on people that are in Florida, that are dealing with the hurricanes, wanting to know that they're okay. And so why don't we just get into the post, shall we? We are as safe as we can be at an Airbnb right now. You're out of your mind if you think I was going to leave my sourdough starter behind. To be quite honest with you, she's not looking very good. That's my fault. Because of all the chaos yesterday, I, I, may, I, I may have forgot to feed her. I have no idea how detrimental that is. We have yet to find out. Pretend the mess didn't happen. If you're watching this today, you can get 30% off all Loom on Amazon. Prime deals. Ooh, that was user error, people. My favorites are mango, watermelon, and their colostrum. One of these days, I'll get less messy. Here is Eve. As you could tell, I had brought her to life. Also, we need a new name. Apparently, I have to rename her. Wait to see if she comes to life or if I effed her up, bringing her with me while evacuating the hurricane. So yes, Samantha included a Bloom sponsorship in her post to say that she was okay during Hurricane Milton. And look, she may have already set up the sponsorship because it is in conjunction with Prime Day. However, I refuse at this point, like I refuse to accept that influencers aren't naive. Influencers know what is going to get them views. And I don't have a problem with the update video itself. I think it's obvious that her audience wants to know that she's safe and she's trying to do something lighthearted to distract her from what is a very scary situation. So I get that. I have nothing wrong with the sourdough starter feeding. It didn't quite sit right knowing that this is where the ad is being placed. Also knowing that she is pregnant and a lot of people are following her through her pregnancy and could take that as advice. And also knowing that this is not an isolated incident. And I don't mean by Samantha, but I mean by Bloom. And I hope that throughout this video, you see that. Because like I said, I like Samantha. However, I struggle with partnerships like this, where it's like these people, and you yeah, will get into it, and I'll think we'll keep finding the same situation. These people are not qualified to be recommending health supplements to their audience, whether or not they like it or not, or they have anecdotal success with it, that is not enough to be truly, well and truly recommending a health supplement to your audience. But anyway, that was the first example. And I feel like if that was the only Bloom spawn that I saw, maybe I could have let it go. Maybe I could have just put it as, you know, she already had the sponsorship lined up. She couldn't do anything about the timing. So she just had to post it then. And I think while some of that is true, I also think the more videos I saw, the more I came to the conclusion that none of it was accidental on Bloom's part anyway. So let's move on to the next big influencer that has done a Bloom sponsorship recently. Now, if the name Aspen Ovard means nothing to you, I guess you go outside a lot because she has been all over TikTok at the moment. Everyone has been talking about Aspen. If you don't know, she is what I would consider like a more OG influencer. She started on YouTube. She literally had like a Tarte palette collaboration. Like that is how popular she was and is. And on YouTube, she has 2 million subscribers. And on TikTok, she has just under 900,000 followers. I cannot express to you enough how much she has been talked about, especially within the girly pops, like those that liked YouTube, like all of that kind of space. She has been everywhere because she has slowly been 
sharing more about her divorce with her husband Parker and how she's been coping with it as a mum. I can't even really surmise it beyond the fact that when she literally gave birth, news broke that her and her husband were divorcing. That news was taken away from her to be able to tell people and was told on her behalf, which was really awful, obviously. And now she's in a space where she feels more happy to talk about it. So she is, and that is getting her a lot of attention. All of her most recent videos have millions of views. Really, she has been talking about the choice of leaving, leaving a relationship and being able to finally talk about it. So so when I think about it from Bloom's perspective, they are, to me, coming to an influencer where they see that they are having a very viral moment. They are having very viral things going on in their life. They are sharing something and Bloom sees this as cha-ching to make a collab and to get on the hype train of her viral success. So let's watch the video, shall we? My mom also stayed and I consider myself to be so extremely fortunate to be in a position where I was able to leave. And I know that I said I wasn't really gonna talk about this a lot, but the other day when I was feeling very cutesy and very demure, I didn't know what I know now. You know who did? Everybody else. Everybody else knew the whole time. I mean, I don't even know what to say. There is nothing that could have hurt me more. And don't worry, I do have therapy tomorrow. I'm starting therapy. I literally got on the phone consultation just to like see if it was a good fit and whatever and started bawling my eyes out the second she said like, tell me about yourself, like what's going on? I don't even know like how to navigate my life from here because I mean, I just don't know. It's kind of weird to see people's perspectives from the outside because when you're sharing your life and you're living it, you see the whole thing, you see the whole circle. When you only put out certain parts of your life, like I knew that I didn't share all of my life and I really didn't share like the negative parts of my life because I do like to have my privacy. When you see everything in your life because you're living it and then you only are putting out certain parts of it, it's hard to see what that actually looks like and how that's perceived from the outside because you know everything. Does that make sense? Even if I knew that I wasn't posting like, oh, this certain issue's going on or whatever, like, I still know what's happening, so I can't see from the same perception of people from the outside looking in. So I'm like seeing these people like, oh, I thought like this was happening and like this is how it worked and whatever. I'm like, dang, I messed up by unintentionally making it look a certain way when it wasn't. Like, I guess that's kind of just what happens when you only share the highlights of your life. But the point is, I'm starting therapy. Take back everything I said about not talking about it. I don't know what I'm gonna talk about. I don't know what I'm gonna say, but I feel frozen in my grief. I, I don't know. Now out of context, this is quite a confusing video however i hope that the kind of context of she's going through a divorce and she's trying to figure out how to talk about it kind of makes it make sense and she was also responding to a comment that says this as someone with a mother that stayed thank you for leaving when it was due i hope your healing goes easy on you the caption is literally like i i'm not making this up the caption is literally replying to at Anna when you're depressed but you still need to film this at Bloom Nutrition ad because it's 30% off today and tomorrow for Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> Hashtag Bloom Partner. No, Cleo, no, I'm no. This is upsetting. The comments are out of control. People are like the caption and she replied saying a single mum who works two jobs. And to me, the point of it is not even really what she said. The point of it is that she knew that by talking about this topic, talking about going to therapy, talking about realizing things like it was it feels very much like that Kylie Jenner <laughs> clip where she's like everyone's just like it's a year about realizing things everyone around me were all just like realizing things it was giving the same energy but everyone I cannot express enough to you how much they are clinging to every word that she says to find out little pieces about her life to understand the divorce to understand what that she's going through and so to just like slide in a bloom sponsorship that she literally couldn't move so i feel like this is kind of proof there was a very set deadline however the fact that they have both put these sponsorships on these very like vulnerable topics that they know a lot of people are going to be watching to me just says a lot about bloom and what they want out of their influences and what they are trying to be a part of videos that they want to be a part of is people's emotional vulnerability and virality but don't worry guys because there is more now i'm not gonna lie i do not know the next creators as well however obviously i found their hashtag ad hashtag spawns in doing research and trying to see if it was a fluke with aspen and samantha 
Or is it part of a bigger campaign for hashtag Amazon Prime Day? Unfortunately, this Amazon Prime Day campaign for Bloom is definitely preying upon people's vulnerability, people's viral topics, and women's health and mental health. So shall we just continue with the ads, with the spawns? I think so. Now, this next person is Addie McCracken, and she has 6.6 million yep million followers on tiktok she's posting a pregnancy q and a so let's get into it shall we hello guys the last time i did a little pregnancy update everyone had a ton of questions so i'm here to answer some more for you i start my makeup with the ilia skin this is the best base i have not announced the exact due date yet but it's beginning of 2025 and i use the makeup by mario contour stick i saw a question asking about my symptoms and i was just extremely exhausted so nauseous all the time which was not the case with rustin this pregnancy has been so different which kind of makes me think it's a girl but i'm also chasing a toddler around all day so that explains why i'm tired yes bloom is safe during pregnancy a ton of people were concerned about it but my best advice is to talk to your doctor before you're taking it my doctor said it's fine for me but it could be different for you strawberry kiwi is my favorite flavor and also 30 percent off for amazon prime day and i use the Too Faced bronzer. I mean, I appreciate that she asked her doctor before taking it, but even with the disclaimer, like, I don't think, like, when are influencers going to realize it's in the title, besties? You're an influencer. The things you say influence people. So even if people think, oh, I better check with my doctor to see if Bloom is safe during pregnancy. Their favorite person has just told them that they are okay and they are taking it. And oh, by the way, here's my favorite flavor. All of these influencers as well, they seem pretty nice and genuine to me, which is why I think it makes it more upsetting. (laughs) Why I'm more like visibly agitated, if you will, is because I think that these influencers all genuinely have a genuine relationship with their audience and so their audiences trust them they believe them they put weight in what they recommend to them but anyway let's watch another one shall we i thought having a toddler and newborn was hard try having a toddler then bringing your newborn home from surgery with half of his skull missing that's hard these last few days i've had to be on high alert because in our house there's an animal flying this way a ball flying this way a leg flying this way i've had to be real careful This is my first time leaving the hospital myself since he's had surgery and it feels good. So we put the toddler down for his nap, told the husband, you got the baby, mom's got things to do. Now, if you don't know who that is, that is Kylan Stutner and she has over 700,000 TikTok followers. And yeah, you probably did catch it correctly from her video. Her child literally just had surgery. So, but of course it makes sense to add a bloom nutrition hashtag spawn hashtag gifted hashtag ad to the surgery and her child's update video. The fact that you know that your audience is going to be checking in on both you and your family to see how your baby is going and how the surgery went and then to just swing on in a Bloom Nutrition ad is like it isn't it isn't lost on me. It truly is not. And again, to me, it just is more and more with every single ad we see. None of it feels accidental with the influences that are being targeted because What do all of these influencers have in common? They are mums or they are pregnant or they are pregnant mums. You get what I'm saying. They all have a similar audience. And as it is natural for people to do when they are pregnant, they will want to follow other influencers who are also pregnant or even better yet, who are mums, who have had kids, who can recommend things to them. This isn't a, if I had a nickel, for every time because I would have four nickels now and this is just within the last five days. Literally all of those videos were posted five days ago so it is very clear to me that they were part of the same campaign for Bloom for that Amazon Prime Day sale which you know obviously it makes sense that a brand is going to want sponsorships for a sale. Don't worry I'm not going to be like whoa that's crazy. What I am gonna be like, whoa, that's crazy about is the influences they targeted and the commonalities that they had. All of these influences are mums or soon to be mums. All of these influences are having a very viral and topical moment right now on TikTok. And all of these influences were going through something or had big updates when they posted their Bloom ads and incorporated them with their Bloom ads. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably just saying, yeah, that's just business. That's just smart business. Well, 
I'm sorry, to me, it's predatory. To me, this is incredibly predatory of Bloom to be targeting over and over again audiences who would probably reflect these influences. So younger women, pregnant women, mums, and telling them that, oh, don't you know that for this influencer, it's safe for them to have while pregnant. This influencer is having it while pregnant. So why don't you try having Bloom while pregnant to set yourself and your baby up for success? And this to me is why it is so much worse. It is so much worse than what we saw previously with them just incorporating it into their general content because this to me feels so specific. It feels so calculated by Bloom. And whether or not the other influencers knew the other influencers that also had these brand deals you cannot deny the pattern here you cannot deny the people that they have chosen and the commonalities that they have now before we get into kind of my final opinions of it all I did want to show you guys a video from a dietitian reacting to Bloom itself because I do feel like it is valuable information to have in a video like this because whilst yes I can go on to say that these influencers are not qualified to be giving health supplement recommendations it also does beg the question is this even a worthwhile supplement so let's watch what this dietitian had to say this has by far been my most requested video, so let's do a review of the Bloom's Green Powder from the perspective of a gut health dietitian. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Julie. I am a registered dietitian that specializes in gut health. Now let's get to the review. Starting with the good, I do like the fact that they don't make any unrealistic crazy claims when it comes to the benefits of using their powder. Now it does contain two grams of fiber per serving, which is not a lot of fiber, but it is more than a lot of other brands, so I do appreciate that. Now I also like the fact that it's sweetened with stevia versus other artificial sweeteners. In terms of the digestive enzyme blend and the adaptogenic blend, you're probably not going to notice any significant changes in symptoms based on these two because the quantities are quite insignificant. I also think it's important to note that a lot of people do not need digestive enzymes, and if your body is not producing adequate levels, you really need to figure out the root cause of why it's not in the first place instead of just putting a band-aid on the problem. In terms of the pre and probiotic blend, don't necessarily have a problem with this, but I wouldn't use this as my probiotic source. You still want to make sure you're getting probiotics through your diet, and I would still consider taking a spore-based probiotic. Now, looking specifically at the green superfood blend and then also the antioxidant beauty blend, these are pretty standard in terms of ingredients. That being said, everything on this label is listed as a proprietary blend, meaning that you don't know the exact quantity of each of the ingredients. So for example, with the organic superfood blend or the green superfood blend, it could be 95% organic barley grass and then 5% everything else, and you're not going to know. Now, I'm not saying that this brand specifically is doing this, but a lot of times brands will use proprietary blends as a way to decrease their costs and in turn also decreasing the quality without the consumer necessarily catching on. And last but not least, let's take a look at the price. So a two month supply costs about $80, which works out to $40 a month. Is it astronomical? No, but I do think that you can get more nutrients from just taking that money and purchasing whole fruits and veggies. You're getting a lot more fiber, a lot more nutrients. In a lot of cases, it's actually more bioavailable. So here are my final thoughts. If you are currently using this bloom powder and you feel like it is helping, by all means, continue taking it. It's not going to cause any harm. Do I think that it is 100% necessary? Absolutely not. I think you can get the same nutrients from having a well-balanced diet full of fruits and veggies. If this is helpful, comment below and let me know which supplements I should cover next. Now, I chose her video specifically because I really like her approach to the supplement because I think it's unfair to say that this product could add no value. But like she says, due to the proprietary blend, you're not going to know exactly what levels of each nutrients you are getting and what you're actually getting in each container is it consistent like who knows but I think the overall message is that that is asking for a lot of money from someone to spend $40 a month on a product that if they were spending that on food they probably wouldn't need it of course there are times where we can need a product like this more than others in the same way that you would take vitamin c when you feel like you're getting a cold I'm not saying that there is no value to a product like this however like with most other products like this when it is putting so much into advertising when they are a kind of more influencery focused brand it's not going to be the most affordable option but it might be the most aesthetic option and for some people forty dollars is an easy spend and if it makes them feel better that is great if you are deep in the briar chats lore you will know that i actually tried a greens product earlier in the year when i tried to reset my life blah 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 I can't say I noticed a difference aside from it being gross I don't know if bloom tastes good but the greens that I got was not that great I'm not gonna lie but I can see the kind of psychological benefit I can see adding in a little bit more greens isn't going to be harmful but 
is it the most effective, cost-effective way to do it? Probably not. However, that just really leans into what I've been saying throughout this video, which is as much as I like and I don't really have an issue with any of these influences I've shown you, if like I said I like Samantha Jo, I'm subscribed to Samantha Jo, doesn't mean I agree with everything that she does, but I under no circumstances think any of them are qualified to be recommending a health supplement, which kind of leads me into the bigger picture of it all, which is not only are these people not qualified, but the fact that this brand is using these people's mental health, physical, emotional, emotional life changes and struggles as a way to market their product instead of people who are actually qualified to talk and sell you the product to me kind of says all that I need to know about the product. To me, I'm sorry, but it doesn't say that they are empowering and woman forward. To me, it says that they are predatory and that these tactics are preying on influencers, audiences who trust them, are using these influencers life moments and big viral moments to get money. They care more about partnering with an influencer that has a genuine relationship with their audience than partnering with people that are qualified to recommend the product. And with all of that said, that is why in my personal opinion, obviously, it's just gotten worse. And to me, it just really gives me an icky, yucky feeling about Bloom as a company and a product. And why I simply had to yap about it with you guys today. But now I would love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think that these ads are worse? Do you think that this campaign was even more predatory than what we've seen in the past from Bloom? Do you think Bloom has gotten worse? What do you think? Do you think it's fine? Do you think people can make their own choices? Obviously, people still make their own choices, but at the end of the day, whether or not people like it, an influencer is an influencer for a reason. They have influence on their audience. They are and do convince their audience to buy things. And so we can't be naive to how Bloom is using that. And I kind of even feel like taking advantage of these influences and the relationships that they have with their audience. But anyway, I know I have yapped way, 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 way too much. Yes, it's true, I have. So. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. You guys always have the best thoughts and opinions, so I simply need to know in the comments down below. But yes, thank you guys so much for watching. If you stay till the end, you are a real one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to keep up with me between my uploads, there should be another one of my videos somewhere on the screen right now. And I also have a Instagram and TikTok. And I will also, mm -hmm, also link my vlog channel in the description down below. But don't you worry, guys, because I'm not funny there either. <laughs> Bye.